Hello there. My name is Peter Thompson and this is one of my myths of golf series and this one is about the wrists in the backswing hinging automatically. Well, some people in the backswing their wrists do hinge automatically which is fantastic for them it's something else in the swing they don't have to think about or worry about. Many people I teach their wrists in the backswing do hinge automatically. That makes my job a whole lot easier. It's something else I don't have to bother dealing with in their swings. However, some people's wrists do not hinge automatically. The reason for the wrist hinge is to increase the speed of the club head. For example, if I hit this ball with almost no hinge whatsoever, just by turning round, the ball will go very straight, very straight, but not very far. I introduce a wrist hinge, and a wrist hinge basically is, is this motion. If I introduce that hinge into the same swing, same turn, then you can see two things. One, the second ball went higher because it's going faster. First one went quite low, it's going slowly, and the ball, the second ball would have gone at least twice as far as the first one. So the hinge is important. I know it is. Very important. But it isn't automatic. I really do wish it was, but it simply isn't. That's the hinge. I'm going to show you on my computer screen now two people I teach and Ben Hogan and we'll just we'll just look at the wrist hinge. Let's go and have a look. This is one of my pupils, his name is James, and his handicap's down to three, I think now. It's what a long, long way. I've taught him since he was 12, and his father, and his mother. And let's look at this, the hinge. This DVD is about the wrist hinge. Now I know for a fact that James's wrists are hinging, and he's been shown how to hinge them. It's a classic hinge, left arm parallel to the ground, shaft more or less vertical. But James was shown how to do that. It simply wasn't automatic. I wish it had been. Let's watch again. It's moving back and left arm club not quite in line. Now it is in line and there's the toe of the club moving upwards as the wrist hinge. That's been learned. The key then is, mentally in the downswing, not to unhinge the wrists. Which is why his impact position is absolutely superb. Another of my pupils. Plays on the Ladies European Tour and I taught Liz how to hinge the wrist properly. There we go, moving backwards, wrist hinging, 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 when the turn stops, the hinge stops. That to me is extremely good. Watch again, body turning, arms moving out. Arm moving, moving upwards, wrist hinging, and that's a great backswing. 
and a great impact position. But Liz was taught how to do that. I'm going to show you now quite an old DVD. of Ben Hogan's. Um, maybe Ben Hogan did have golf lessons, but I think he probably didn't. He probably worked out most things himself, including the wrist hinge. So this is a really old bit of film. And um, there's his left arm club nowhere near in nine. And now it is in nine. Now watch the hinge. I'm afraid the quality isn't too great. And again, left arm more or less parallel to the ground, see from the black and white squares. And there's the shaft, more or less vertical. That's a sort of the standard way I would teach, if one can do that, is to have the left arm parallel to the ground and the shaft vertical. And Ben Hogan's wrists were phenomenally flexible. But look at the hinge there now. I'll just measure it for you. That's about 146 degrees. Now, please don't try and do that. I can't do that. Not many people can do that because all of our wrists are built in a different way. That sort of hinge produces a huge amount of club head speed. And if it's controlled, great. It's Ben Hogan swing. I repeat, Ben Hogan swing, not somebody else's swing. Worth a second look. Fantastic. So Ben Hogan, huge wrist hinge to my pupils less wrist hinge because we're all different. I used to live in Johannesburg and I worked at a driving range, a nice driving range. The weather in Johannesburg is fantastic. In the winter, if you've been there, you will know, but in the winter there's cold mornings and then the sun shines all day long and it's superb. The man who owned the driving range was Jock Vevey. Now Jock Vevey his daughter was married to Gary Player. And Gary Player was then probably one of the top golfers in the world. But Jock and I used to discuss golf swings. And one thing that Jock was very keen on was the wrist hinge. So he taught Gary Player to hinge the wrists. Jock said to me, when you rest the ball, start back, and the wrists start to hinge. And the further back you go, the more hinge you get. And then at the top of the swing, full wrist hinge, full shoulder turn, end of the back swing. So bear in mind that when you dress the ball, your wrists are partially hinged. We're not starting off like that. We're starting off like that. And approximately one third of the hinge is in position when you dress the ball. So when we start to go back, we simply continue the process. Hinge to the top. If you do that, fantastic. Almost ignore this DVD. What I hate doing is confusing anybody. So if your wrists hinge normally, naturally, then that's superb. But many people don't. It has to be learned. It's like turning the shoulders properly or transferring your weight or turning your hips or moving your arms, it's part of the swing and a very important part of the swing. Hinge, 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 turn, stop, hit the ball. We'll go back to the TV screen now and we'll look at Tiger Woods, Annie Ells, and a few others, and we'll again discuss the wrist hinge. So we'll try and find 
any else there's any else and I know for a fact that the wrist hinge for Ernie is very important and you'll see quite clearly there goes the hinge that isn't natural it really isn't he's making that happen and he's there left arm dead straight rainbow straight good wrist hinge gives him lots of club head speed This may well interest you. This is Byron Nelson. And in 1945, Byron Nelson won 11 tournaments on the trot. Yeah, that's 11 on the trot. Average score for the year, 1945, 68.33 shots around. Can you imagine that? More than 60 years ago. Byron Nelson on the right, top of the backswing. Many hours on the left, top of the back swing. And I took this swing myself, or this shot myself, at the Masters in 2004. The wrist hinge, or Byron Nelson, is 84, which is about, I guess, a 96 degree wrist hinge. And I'm going to make this one. 94 as well, and see if there's actually any difference. So, two phenomenal good golfers, and the wrist hinge at the top of the backswing is more or less exactly the same. Left arm angle to the ground is the same, shaft angle to the ground is the same, wrist hinge is virtually exactly the same. So two great golfers just happened to have the same wrist hinge. I never met Byron Nelson, I never spoke to him, but I've seen his swing and I think his wrist hinge was for him completely natural. He doesn't mention the wrist hinge in his books, so I guess he did that naturally. Fantastic. Ernie Ells didn't. Both they get to the same place. That's the important thing. But let's look at uh, Tiger Woods whilst we're here. Tiger Woods needs no interaction from me. He's a phenomenal good golfer. So the driver, um, not particularly good image but there's the left arm parallel to the ground and there's the shaft vertical good full wrist hinge shaft parallel to the ground and that hinge and that turn gives him a phenomenal amount of speed and I read somewhere that his coach Butch Harmon said to Tiger in the backswing pick the club up with your right hand. In other words, as you turn round, pick up the club with your right hand, and that's also known as a wrist hinge. Don't copy that. Please don't copy that. So we've seen Baron Nelson, Ernie Els, same wrist hinge. Tiger Woods, and again, don't try and copy that swing, just it's, it needs a special sort of body. Butch Harmon, tall Tiger Woods, pick up the club with your right hand. Well, that to me is a wrist hinge. Same thing. Right hand goes up, left hand goes down, butt of the club goes down, head of the club goes up. That's a wrist hinge. Very, very important that we're all different and in a golf swing, the same things apply. We're all different. One of my pupils, 
single finger hand can go off her, his wrist hinge is there, about 60 degrees. So starting off with about 30, but only managing another 30. Wrist hinge, 60 degrees. Another of my pupils, hits the ball a long, long way. I think he plays a three handicap. He can hinge his wrists. I can't do this. 150 degrees with his left arm dead straight. So 150 degrees from one person, only 60 from another. That's a difference of 90 degrees. It's a huge difference. And if I try to make the man who can hinge only 60 degrees hinge more, well, he couldn't do it. If I try to stop the other man hinging less, then he couldn't do that either. Or nor would he want to. So our wrists are built differently. Some stiff, some flexible, and some people, huge wrist hinge, some people less, some people hinge naturally, fantastic for them, other people don't. Depending on your category, hinge naturally or not, if not is the answer, then you need to practice the hinge quite slowly. There, there's the hinge. And there's the turn. So the angle of my wrist, this is my wrist angle, not anybody else's, is about 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is the average. It is not normal. 150 degrees from one person, 60 from another. The average of the two is 90 degrees. So the average, or the wrist hinge, for most people is about 90 degrees. To see if you are hinging your wrists, by the time the club is, or your arm is parallel to the ground of the backswing, the club should be about vertical. That's quite normal. Vertical from this camera angle, not from this one. There, the club is now pointing to the left. If I then keep on turning from there, it will then start to come around more and more towards the target. If you can't get back that far, that's my normal backswing, that's with the clip points. It's not right or wrong, that's in the right place for my hinge and my shoulder turn. Please don't try and hinge your wrist more than you can, or turn more than you can. If you try and hinge more than you physically can, you'll just wind up letting go of the golf club, probably with both hands, and or bending your arm. And then you've lost your good in position. So there's a the wrist hinge. If your wrist hinge naturally, fantastic. Don't bother watching this. And if they don't, then you need to practice hinging your wrists, but crucially, only as far as you can hinge your wrists. This angle between my thumb and my first finger, that's as far as my wrist will hinge because that's as far as my thumb will go down. If my thumb went to there, I'd hinge less. If my thumb could come down to here, I'd hinge more. It's worthwhile checking. Just put your hand in front of you, pull the thumb down, see where the angle is. It's probably about 90 degrees on average. In which case, your wrist hinge will be about 90 degrees. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.